All right, replacing the hard drive in your Audi MMI 3G Plus unit. You will need one dirty ass car. You will need something to pull out the bottom of your climate control unit. You will also need radio keys. Let's get started. Yay! One down. The radio keys are going to be kind of like inserting USB into your computer. You will always get it wrong the first time, and then the second time, and then the third time will work out just fine. Once you have your two radio keys in, pull out. Now you'll notice that your shift knob might be in the way. Maybe on a manual, it's in the right spot if you have it in neutral. If you have it in automatic, you're gonna have to turn on your car, listen to it whine, pull that puppy back into neutral and make sure your parking brake is on. And we'll shut it off again. At that point, you can weasel this thing right out. Once it's out, you're going to have to pull out the cables that are behind here. There are quite a few. I find the easiest way to do this is to rotate it to the left, and now you'll see them on the side here. The blue one is going to lift up with this little notch here. The yellow and gray ones will pull up with these little tabs here, and this one will be a lever, and that lever kind of pulls out a little bit from the bottom, and then you can pull it out. Last but not least is this one on the edge, which is just going to be a little clip on the edge of the unit. We're going to stop for a second because I can't do this one-handed. Hey, it's all done. What I forgot was this one right here, which actually is right here on my unit. You might also have one here. Mine is not optioned accordingly. This one is also just a little tab that you press in and pull the item out. This mess is A-OK. -okay. Do not worry about this. You're fine. If you feel really, really nervous about this, go ahead and put it back in park. Now you get to get out of the car and take your unit back inside. Now that it's somewhere warm, you are going to need a, I believe, a T7 bit or a flathead screw that driver and fits, and we're going to take off all of these top screws. And the cover should lift off with a little bit of help. Once you're in there, the CD drive just kind of rests on top, so you can pull that out and leave it off to the side, and boom, there is your hard drive. The hard drive is held in by a series of clips that cover it, as well as some screws that come in from the bottom. So you'll see we need to remove a screw here, where there's also a little tab that hangs over it. There's a screw here, and we're going to follow that all the way around the drive. First thing, we're going to pull out this ribbon right here, uh, just so we can turn this thing over without any issues. To do that, you're going to need some kind of tool, and we're going to pull up on either side of this clip. So it normally just pulls straight up, and if you have a tool for it, it becomes really easy. We'll just pull up each side, and then the ribbon will just pull out very gently. If it's not coming out gently, the clip is not pulled up all the way. Don't yank on it. So we're going to need to get out of that tip, that tab, and this tab. Let's do it. So now with all the screws out, we should be able to pull the hard drive free. 
the easiest way to get started, um, you can kind of feel around it a little bit, but you're going to want to pry up on the IDE connector first to kind of loosen it. Once you have that IDE clip free, just by pulling up a little bit, it should slide out from under the tabs, uh, the one on top as well as the one on the left, and you should be able to get the unit out with a little bit of massaging. At that point, you're just going to take four screws out of either side of the unit. Drive is free, and we just need to pull it out at a little bit of an angle to get it free from the IDE connector. And now you're ready to plug it into your machine and get the drive imaged. So we've connected the drive to a USB to IDE converter. Links are below. So there are many ways to do this on Mac OS X, on Linux, and on Windows. We're going to do this on Windows because Windows is the biggest pain in the butt. I'm also going to let you know that you don't have to use the tools that I'm using here. You can use your disk imaging software of choice if you have a disk imaging software of choice. As long as it does a bit-by-bit -bit copy and isn't copying files, you are going to be successful. So why don't we get started? I've opened a PowerShell window. You can use either the standard Windows command prompt or PowerShell. The other thing you're going to need is DD for Windows, which is also in the link below. That is going to allow us to actually do that bit-by-bit -bit transfer. Uh, you'll notice for those of you who are using OS X or Linux that you would also be using DD in this case, so the only thing that changes is how you're finding the devices to write to. Um, I will add some information below for those platforms if you need it, um, but we're going to go with Windows here just because Windows has the most amount of crap to go with it. So let's get started. We're going to use disk part to list our disks and our partitions. We're going to use list disk to get the list of disks. We're going to find the one closest to the size. Select the disk and then grab the partitions and make sure that there are eight. You'll see it's an 80 gig device. Most of the time you're going to have a 60 or a 40. I just already changed this out before. So now that we know that it's disk 2, we're going to use DD uh, to list the disks and make sure it matches there. And you'll see there that it says device, hard disk 2, and then a whole bunch of partitions. Now we know which one it is. So in this command, we're going to run DD with input of uh, hard disk 2 partition 0, which means the whole thing. And we're going to write it to a file called whatever you want. In my case, it's this image file. And we're going to use BS equals 32K as a 32K block size. I add the progress flag, which is not available on other platforms from Windows, but there are, in GNU DD, there is a similar option. And it's going to go to town. I'm not going to make you sit through the whole thing. Let's move on to the part where we bring in the new drive, and we're going to write that image out to that new drive. Same process here. We are going to connect our new drive uh, with the same IDE to USB connector, and we're going to do the same process in reverse. So we're going to use the same terminal, the same DD tool. We're just going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to go from a file uh, to a device. So we'll connect the device, and then we're going to use those tools to make sure we know what device we're writing to, and call it a day. Now, mine is already going to show partitions. Um, yours is probably going to be empty, because you're going to be buying a disk off of eBay that's probably never been used. But then when you list partitions, you're going to see nothing, and you're going to know you're not writing to a drive in your system that's really important. It is very important that you verify before you get started. So let's party. Now we're going to use the DD tool, and we're going to list our devices. So again, my hard disk 2 has a whole bunch of partitions. I want to bowl right over those, which is perfect. So we're going to use that image that we had written as our IF device. And instead of the file as the output, we're going to use that device name that we used as an input. So hard disk 2, partition 0 for the whole thing. And we're going to actually increase our block size because we found that it worked better. Now, I'm showing you here this filter of removable, but it turns out that's not going to work because Windows actually considers that USB hard drive to be non-removable, and it normally is a nice safety mechanism to make sure you don't blow over your system device, so we'll get rid of that. Now again, I'm not going to make you go through all of this. Once you're done, it's going to show records in and records out, and then you know that you have completed the process. Now, my screen capture software isn't showing this, but what you do at this point is go to your little USB thing in the lower right-hand corner of your screen and eject the device to make sure that all the data is written to the drive. At that point, you're ready to reinstall the unit. Grab your bracket, grab your drive, place it in a little bit of an angle so that you can get the pins to re-engage 
on the bracket and then it'll slide right on hopefully if you're lucky make sure you've got the right row because if you don't you'll feel it <clears throat> all right that's in we'll grab our screws we'll put those back in Now that that's in there, of course your pins are going to be on this side to match this. And we're going to slide it in so that we can engage each one of these mount points. And that looks good. And then now that this is mount over the pins, you should be able to just kind of press that down. And you've got it engaged. So we'll flip it over, put these screws back. That's back into place, we can remount the DVD drive. So we'll pull up on the connector to make sure that it can actually engage. And then we very carefully push the blue part in so that it's resting comfortably. Press the catch down. A little gent gentle tug to make sure everything is okay. And then it just rests on top of the screw holes You'll see these little nubs come in. And now that the nubs are in, we can put the cover back on. I have the screws kind of sitting on top here, and it's actually going to probably be a pain in the butt when I put this on. So they're probably going to pop out, but that's okay. So just notice that on either side, there is a part that slides in and a part that sticks out. So these little tabs go inside the unit, and the rest of the case sits outside the unit. Oh no! See? See what happens when you take shortcuts? Anyway. These tabs right here stay in the unit, the rest of it is out of the unit, and you should be able to just and the same back here, these tabs right here go in the unit and then you should be able to press down and the top is secure and you can put the screws back in just as you took them out. The order doesn't matter very much, just again, light and then not so light. That's it, let's put it back in the car. All right, all the cables are back in for mine. Blue, yellow, gray, no green, big honking thing, optical, and this one right here. And now that my radio has come back on, we can see that it at least booted properly. And we mute that, we'll turn it back onto its side and slide it back into its harness. Now, if this doesn't cleanly go back in, you might have something blocking. Which I might, with my one hand. Let's see if we can adjust this a little bit. Because this should remount really, really easily. So if you're hearing all these noises, you're not doing very well. Alright, so now that I have it aligned properly, I'm going to slide it back in. You don't need the keys to put it back should just go and click back into place. And now your climate control will also just click back into place. And we'll see if it does it with one hand. It might not. But let's hope. Click, click, boom. And we're online.